and welcome to Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio today is Donna Ali, CEO and President of Team Clean Inc. So let's now find out and our conversation with Donna. Donna, welcome to Significant TV. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And thank you for having me, Fran. I'm really excited. It is my pleasure, Donna. I have seen you on the stage at various events. You are a woman that, as a solo entrepreneur, as a single woman, started a business because you had to and you've grown it from a one-person business to employing over 700 employees. So you're phenomenal, you're significant, and your story is really fascinating. So I'd like for you to take us back. I mean, a single woman, uh, a mom. Why the cleaning business? Well, Fran, I have to think way back, first way of all. Back. Way back. You started in 1980s, yes, right? Yes, 19, right? yeah, it was 1980, 81, 82, somewhere around there. So I was down on my luck. Um, I had graduated from a small university in HBCU called Wilberforce University. Uh, born and raised in Bryn Mawr, and mind you, um, the working class part of Bryn Mawr, where um, there were quite a few domestics, and my family, of course, were domestics. My family being very proud of me going off to Wilberforce and graduating was so happy because they thought that I was going to be doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. Well, it didn't happen that way. Um, um, I'm fortunate, but I'm fortunate at the time. Um, I um, got pregnant and had a child and had to move humbly back to Bryn Mawr without a job and no means to support my daughter. So I started doing um, things that I knew how to do and that was to clean houses. Um, so I went to uh, put an advertisement in a newspaper, a local newspaper called Mainline Times. I'm sure you're familiar with the Mainline Times. So, um, and, the, and the advertisement read, we'll clean your home. Not expecting anyone to call me, but uh, after three weeks, um, I think I got a call from a woman in Villanova who um, wanted to give me a shot. So she asked me to come up to clean her house, and I did um, the whole day working, cooking, cleaning, polishing silver, all those things that were included in the um, domestic house trade, I would say. So um, anyway, um, she worked me for the entire day, and at the end of the day, she asked me, well, what do I owe you? And not understanding my worth, not having any money, um, depending on public assistance for many years, I didn't know what to say to her. So God rest her soul, I love this woman. And she said to me, well, dearie, if you don't know what I should pay you, then I'll pay you what I think you should have. And for eight hours of work, she literally went into her pocketbook, her little purse, and gave me a $10 bill. So at the end of the day, of course, you know, I was um, yeah, disappointed, but I'm gonna tell you, Fran, I had 10 more dollars than I had the day before. I left there, um, all sorts of things in my head, and you know, vowed never to return again. So I went back to my house, um, apartment in, in Bryn Mawr, and um, sat around, nothing to do, still really depressed, you know, embarrassed. All my sorority sisters were principals and, you know, just, you know, living the life, and poor Donna. So then I got a call from her probably about three weeks later, and she called me again. She could not say Donnie, so she said, I mean Donna, so she said Donnie. Donnie, I want you to come up, you know, try it again. So I did. I don't know what got into me, but I did. So I went back again and um, ended up the same chores. And, and, and she even hid $10 in the washing machine. You know, like the movie The Help. Have you yes, seen that I've movie? seen The Help. Yeah. Oh she my ended goodness. up. So um, anyway, so that uh, she hid the money. Of course, the money was still there. And she went through the whole shebang, the whole thing, all over again. But at the end of the day, she said the same thing. She says, now, what do I owe you? And I very proudly said to her, you owe me 
fifty dollars. Well, at that time, fifty dollars, you know, was big for you know a day's work. So she went in her pocketbook and she gave me the fifty dollars. And the story goes on from there. You know, she, I, I always did everything with a smile. With it, no matter what was going on in my head, you know, I'm all, I'm, I'm doing things with a smile. I might not like it, but I'll do it with a smile. So anyway, um, she ended up telling her friends about me and her her neighbors and before you know I think maybe in a three to five year span we were doing about 55 houses a week I hired women from West Africa my dear mother my cousins ladies from the church in South Philly and I didn't even know that I had a business I was what what we call flat foot hustling and so I went from house to house I drove the ladies I picked them up. I didn't even know it was quality control, but I was doing the quality control, going through the house, making sure everything was okay, collecting the money, and then paying them at the end of the week. So I went on like that for a while, and that's how Team Clean got started. Definitely, now I see the name. <laughs> <laughs> there was the team. <laughs> yes, yes. And you're incorporated. At what point did you move from the flat foot hustle, yes. which I don't think shows up in the entrepreneurial uh, books that they give to college students, so they may have to add that. They as part need of the, to right, add right, that, okay. absolutely. <laughs> okay. So um, I was, um, I, I got incorporated because, first of all, let me just tell you this. I had a girlfriend, I have a girlfriend, and she graduated from Harvard Law School. So she, when she came back to Bryn Mawr, because we all grew up in this area, Bryn Mawr, Ardmore area, and so when she came back, um, I said I said to her I, I'm cleaning houses and she I was uh, my expectation would she would say cleaning houses but she said wow that's great you have a business and it was then that I realized that I had a business so what she did was she said you need to be incorporated and I'm telling you I did not take any business courses had no idea what in incorporation was. She had to explain it to me. So she sent me to a friend, and in 1990, um, the company was incorporated. And shortly after that, when she turned me on to different or gave me ideas about registering in the uh, what was then called a Minority Business Enterprise Council. So I got registered there, and I got another break, and that was a call from a gentleman in uh, Baltimore, and he had won a contract at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. And um, he said, he called me one day and he said, hey, listen, Miss Allie, I see your name on this list. And I didn't even know what list he was talking about. And I have a contract in Philadelphia to clean Veteran Stadium. And I need a partner. And I need a diverse partner. And um, he said, would you like to come down and interview? Now, Fran, I knew Bryn Mawr. Wilberforce University and Bryn Mawr only. So I didn't venture into the city much, didn't know too much about stadiums or anything like that. So I found my way down there and I met with him. And he said, um, you know, hey, listen, can you clean this, I think it was 60,000 seat stadium? And, you know, this is what you have to do. You have to have 110 people a night and a payroll of $10,000. And he's giving me the whole story. And I'm, I'm you know, looking like, oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. So I don't know what possessed me to say this. But he asked me, he said, can you do this? And I said, yes, sir, I can do it. Now, I'm thinking about the eight women that I have from West Africa back on the main line, my mother, my cousins, and he's talking about 110 people, you know, a night, a $10,000 payroll a week. And I said to him, yes, I can do it. And left back, wasn't thinking about him, went on back to Bryn Mawr with my 10 ladies from West Africa, my mother, my cousins, you know, cleaning houses around the main line, and never thought about them. He called me about a month later and he said, you have the job. I was like, oh no. <laughs> but it was a good problem to have. And so I ended up staying at um, Vet Stadium, getting that contract, staying there for about, uh, until implosion as a matter of fact. And went on to, during that time, Shea Stadium in New York, um, Camden Yards, um, the Preakness, which, <laughs> Uh, and just a number of events, City Hall, uh, the Convention Center, the Republican National Convention, the Democratic National Convention, I could go on and on and on. 
And so, you know, I, I could just say that my life is good, God has been good to me, and I work hard. I'm so happy, and I'm especially happy for the employees that work for Team Clean. That was going to be one of my questions. I mean, your story is phenomenal. It's, it's really awesome. And the way that you've taken the challenge and viewed it as an opportunity, as you said, with a smile. So what are you most proud of? I mean, you've accomplished a lot in your business. I am most proud of the fact that I can create jobs. I can create jobs for what folks call the have-nots, the least of these, the ones who have never had an opportunity to work, who are formerly incarcerated, and that's my passion there. Um, the new immigrants, the women, the single parents, um, a couple stories that you know I'd like to share while I'm on that track. That is that is so passionate to me. I mean, even now, you know, I'm just I'm just I'm just thinking about it and so happy and so proud. Um, just recently, we hired um, a gentleman from Aleppo, and he was a professional in his country. So he's here now working a cleaning job. He is so happy to have that job. Um, he works so, he's so proud, he's so, he, he tries to do it to perfection. And the other thing that I'd like to mention is that um, being able to hire formerly incarcerated puts so much joy in me because it's hard when they get out. And I always say that if a man or a woman who has, an, who ha, who has never had a job, and gets a job, their walk is different. Their talk is different. They view life different. I don't care what kind of job it is. It just makes a difference in a person's life. And I feel good about that. So those are, those are the things that make it all work for me and make it so special for me. And you are making an impact. And in some ways, as I listen to you, you're really doing that soulful work. You're doing the work that improves not only your clients, but it impacts the community because you're caring about an individual and you're making individuals' lives better. I know that there are some women entrepreneurs watching, perhaps they're mompreneurs or accidental mm -hmm. entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. entrepreneurs by need. What's a single lesson that briefly you'd like to leave them with as a business owner whose business has spanned over 30 years? I would like to say to them, uh, leave them with a, what a gentleman said to me some years ago, um, my mentor who was Dan Tabus, who um, is long gone now, but owned Royal Bank. And he used to often say to me, he called me kid, but he said, kid, I'm going to tell you the secret to success. And he said, the more you put in, the more you get out. The more you put in, the more you get out. So I'd like to say to those um, mompreneurs, is that what you call yes. them? Yes. Those flatfoot hustlers uh, that are, you know, um, creating a business. The more you put in, the more you get out. I think that's the key. Never give up. Never give up. Wow. Donna, thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Words of wisdom, no doubt. Words of wisdom. The more you put in, the more you get out. Significant stories, significant wisdom, and a significant entrepreneur. Donna Ali, president and founder and CEO of Team Clean, Inc., you get information that helps you think about your life and others' lives differently. Watch us, Significant TV.